Nice way to cap off eight World Series of Poker circuit rings for Michael Leck, the pure, unadulterated joy of winning a bracelet. Welcome back to Las Vegas and our Poker Go studio for another edition of the World Series of Poker recap show. Alina Jad alongside Maria Ho, and that was something to see, right? People still get excited, even though they've had results in the past. And by the way, that tie-dye swimsuit did get a workout. He dove straight into the pool and video unseen. Now, uh, let's lead off the show in what I always like to call the Hobuck status report. Uh, Maria, a week of play later, are we on the upswing or downswing? Well, if I told you that the highlight of my week is actually coming in here and spending time with you, Ollie, uh -oh. what do you think that says about my I'm online I'm guessing price? that we're in the red, but the good news is that you're not gonna be losing any money here on the desk with me. And the opposite of losses is what these lucky few were able to compile throughout events 13 to 19. One name jumping off the screen and not just because of that $352,000 haul. Yeah, it's got to be Joe McKeon who won the WSOP main event in 2015, took down another bracelet in 2017, and now 2020 showing these kids online what's up. And there can only be one champion, but there are several others in bids to get there, knocking on the door. Top 10 finishes for some big names making some deep runs, including Maria's pick at the onset of these broadcasts, the one to watch, Connor Drynan, Matt Matros out there, and of course, Anthony Zeno, accomplished WPT champion, all making a splash. And with more on names and screen names, let's send it over to Maria. Now, I've played quite a bit of online poker over the last 20 years, and it's somewhat rare that I come across a really good screen name. The vast majority of them, like the poker one, two, threes of the world, provoke a huge eye roll. So it begs the question, if you win a WSOP bracelet online, what name do you want to be associated with and have etched into the history books? Over the course of today's show, I will reveal to you my top eight picks over this year's WSOP final tables and let you know which one I think is best. We'll be looking forward to that. And in the meantime, here is a look at your upcoming week on WSOP.com. Five events, four out of five of them, $500. And as we move deeper and deeper into the overlapping part of the program where GG Poker events begin to scale up, what better time than now to bring in one of GG Poker's own ambassadors direct from Vienna, Austria via Skype, Fedor Holtz. Fedor, how are you, bud? Hey. So I understand Thanks, that uh, I understand that Vienna's not currently in a lockdown or a quarantine, and that would explain why you have that big smile on your face, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's actually been, uh, they, they handle it quite well, so uh, we, we distanced and we, um, we were putting on masks, but, uh, you know, you could go outside, we, we went to parks and spent some time uh, on the terrace, so that helped. Well, even though it seems like things have been handled quite well over there on that front, I know that people were seeing your name back in the online streets a lot when <laughs> lockdown first happened. So what's the status of your retirement, especially because online poker is seeing a boom right now? Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, I spend a lot more time at home. I canceled most of my travel, so um, it was very convenient that uh, there's been big uh, online games again. And so I decided to play some some more and uh yeah it was very nice to reconnect with old friends as well and got back in the game and it's been going pretty well as well so uh having a lot of fun now we've asked all of our guests to this point for sort of an opinion on this i personally am such a big fan of live poker and i've had the privilege of being in the booth to watch you make some very big scores in those streets but now we're back in this online world which is sort of where a lot of guys cut their teeth how do you feel as far as what is the better platform to do what you do I mean, for me, it's more like it depends on the game. So I, I always love the, the competition and the, the challenge. And when I feel like, you know, there is a good environment and, and like, yeah, when it's fun and, and, and good games. So, um, so yeah, when, when, I'm, when I'm playing like these big online uh, tournaments and it's not five, six times a week, I'm really, really enjoying it. So right now I'm, I'm having a lot of fun playing once, once or twice a week. 
um, but also, man, I love live poker. It's just, uh, I just love playing these big, big tournaments. Well, aside from just playing, though, you have been keeping yourself quite busy. I know that you launched the Poker Code Academy. You guys did a grindhouse of sorts. I know that people say online poker is a very tough arena to get involved with nowadays. So how do you feel about people's chances at this point? Maybe they're just newly getting into the game and how they can progress and improve. Yeah, I mean... I think what I like uh, what I like about the WSOP is that it's it's bringing this thrill to to the game. So it's you can tell that especially in America, a lot of people who talk about the WSOP when they talk about winning a bracelet or the the excitement around it, um, like it's you know there's this special feel about it, and uh, I think that's how poker should be. It's a lot of fun and and um, not just this this grind and this tedious. Uh, um, like work, but it, I think it should be it should be exciting for everyone who's participating. And that's the idea for us with Poker Code as well as to just bring you know like make it enjoyable an enjoyable learning experience as well and bring together uh, people who want to go on that journey together. Well, on the subject of joy, Fedor, you have not made it a secret that you think balance is a big part of that recipe <laughs> for success in poker. And to that effect, I know that you dabbled in a lot of other things during this quasi-retirement. Tell us about what you've been up to outside of poker since we last checked in. Yeah, I mean, um, my biggest project right now, which uh, what which this shift uh, or why this shift happened is because I've been uh, building um, or working on building a rather big community space here in Vienna and uh, uh, due to COVID uh, that was postponed for uh, quite some months. So um, yeah, that's why I spent uh, more time playing online now, but uh, that's still going to be the thing I'm going to put in the most of my time is to basically bring together um, people who, are, who care about um, positive change or improving um, the system here, mainly in Vienna, but then hopefully also um, more globally. So, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, the thing I've been spending most of my time on and hopefully can can go back to, to build that even further. Well, certainly great to hear. And thank you so much for being with us, Fedor. Maria, no shortage of philanthropy out there in the poker community, huh? No, you were a big part of that. Yeah, paid the And let's away. take a look at the young man's bio. Just 26, hard to believe, one bracelet, but countless millions of dollars compiled in the cash game streets and back online a lot of people are a little bit worried about seeing that screen name pop up now perhaps you too aspire to have a screen name that strikes fear in the hearts of opponents or maybe is good for a chuckle but you're having a little trouble figuring out how to get there enter our very own maria ho with some tips on how to construct a screen name that'll last a lifetime yeah, well, unfortunately, a lot of the good ones are already taken, but if you are still looking, I have three criteria that I think makes for a good screen name. Now, first, it has to be something that has a creative or witty use of poker-relevant terminology. So I recently came across a screen name that uh, the person was called Potomophobia, and then I found out that it was a fear of rivers, which I think that's a very valid fear good in one. this game. The next one would be the use of an anagram. And something that I thought was pretty interesting is that Phil Helmuth's name online is Loom Stackin, which has a little bit of that poker reference of maybe stacking chips, but also stands for luckiest man. And Phil is pretty lucky. <laughs> so makes sense. Now, the third one would be incorporation of your real name in your online screen name. And I think. A really great representation of that would be D. Dang, whose screen name was You're in Danger, because there's also that extra intimidation factor. And he was a very successful high stakes online poker player. All right, so we've seen 17 final tables so far, somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 screen names. And I understand you reached into that hat and picked out eight front runners for your bracket. And we're going to reveal them to you now. Why these eight, Maria? Well, I like Art Vandelay because who doesn't like a good Seinfeld reference? And Bagel Bites was actually a name that I played against quite a bit and every single time it the left frozen me. frozen pizzas. Yes. The and, little, oh. oh, so good. And it just left me craving them every time. Now, Ichikawawa, that's the screen name that belongs to Pat Lyons. And I just 
chose it because it's just something that Pat Lyons has been known for throughout his poker career. It's what he says when he drags a pot. It's what he says when he celebrates. And so I think it's kind of cool that you can incorporate something that's somewhat random but kind of stands for, you know, what your demeanor is at the poker table. So a little bit of suspense that you have built up now. We don't yet know who the eventual champion is going to be there, but we do know who our very first champion from GG Poker is. In event number 34, the title went to Shomo Ishikawa. $117,000 richer is PP Scion, and there is some talent coming out of Japan. Yeah, Ishikawa is the third bracelet winner from Japan. Another name from Japan that has won a bracelet is somebody probably more well known to people, Nayo Kahara. He's actually a quite accomplished mixed game player, Ali. And there are some other interesting names. Daniel Strelitz knocking on the door in fourth as you get a look at Event 34's final results. Now, Event 34 wasn't actually supposed to be the first champion crowned on GG Poker, but unfortunately there were some server issues that led to that reality. And here now to discuss those, GG Poker Ambassador Daniel Negranu. Daniel, what happened? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously when software crashes, nobody's more tilted than me, as we saw last week in my own little tirade when I was playing on WSOP. Uh, essentially what happened, there was two things specifically. First and foremost, you know, we expected a huge turnout for this thing, and we got one. Not only did we get a rec world, you know, record-breaking World Series of Poker events for event number one, but we also had a bunch of people logging on to watch. So for as prepared as we were for what was to happen, we still had an issue there. Later in the evening, we also had a DDoS attack, which both have been rectified going forward, so hopefully that should, uh, you know, play out well. And 32 and 33, the events there will be postponed till next week. Uh, and there's a compensation package to all players who obviously have, you know, were affected negatively by that. Yeah, well, now that GG is just getting underway, but you've been playing the WSOP events on WSOP.com for, you know, the better half of almost three weeks now. How do you feel like that's um, met your expectations in the sense of the turnouts and how the tournament's been running, but also how you've been playing yourself? Well, yeah, no, it's been it's been a lot of fun, frankly. You know, it's only one event a day that I'm playing on WSOP. Um, you know, made like eight caches, you know, some deep runs here and there. So that's been fun. But definitely looking forward to making the trip on August 1st over to Mexico so I can play some of the GG stuff. The World Series stuff's fun, but it's predominantly really small buy-ins. Uh, GG's going to have some big ones with the, of course, $25 million guaranteed main event and, uh, of course, a 25K buy-in, some 10K heads up. A lot of big stuff that uh, I'm looking forward to. Do you have an opinion, Daniel, on where you think you're going to see the tougher fields, whether they'll be on WSOP.com or on GG? Well, that's a great question. I, I think the tougher fields, especially because the buy-ins will be high, will be in the high buy-in events on GG Poker. Um, just, you know, every great player in the world can get to somewhere where they can play this. And a lot of them don't live already in the United States, so they'll be able to do that. So I would expect the fields to be really strong for the GG uh, leg of this. All right, well, Daniel, I know that you have a lot of prep that goes into before you actually make that trip down to Mexico. So in terms of your mental game and your mindset, what do you think is something that you're going to be incorporating into that routine once you get down there? Yeah, I mean, I've always been somebody that's learned that uh, rather than go, well, I actually learned this through time, rather than go someplace and complain because they don't have what you need, plan ahead. So I've already got a shopping list and groceries and everything set up. We're... Uh, we're all set to go. We've got uh, the house booked, we've got the plane booked and everything like that. So mentally it'll be as simple as, you know, knowing that I can recreate as best as I can what I have here at home, you know, in the house that we have in Mexico. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and walk us through some of the issues. And obviously we know that you'll be working hard behind the scenes to make sure that those are remedied moving forward. And he's heading to Mexico, but so are you, Maria. You're going to go south of the border and try to pick up some pesos instead of hobucks. Ho pesos. All right. So, uh, Event 34 champion has been crowned, and we are also going to be working toward crowning this screen name bracket champion. Your servers didn't shut down. They've been up and running, and now you are ready to announce the winners out of these first four matchups. Yeah, well, between Art Vandalay and Nostradankis, I had to go with Nostradankis. It's kind of funny, donk. No Shadamas, you guys get it. Bagel Bites, I mean, he was up against a really tough, great screen name in Mac Daddy 15. That is not a tough, great screen. That, <laughs> that was like the biggest favorite on the board. So. I, okay. 
definitely tugged a little bit at the heartstrings. Who doesn't love Mr. McMillan? But then between Bing Shui and Itchy Kawawa, I had to go with Itchy Kawawa just because there's a sheer random element to it, but also I have to explain that that's Pat Lyon's screen name, and it's actually something that he's always said throughout, you know, his entire poker career when he wins a pot, when he's at the table. It's kind of his, you know, I, I don't know, like what he's known for. So I don't know, I thought it was kind of cool. And I had mentioned why I like Huck Cheever. <laughs> Time now to look back at the week's results. A number of champions were crowned, and first among them, the man you saw at the top of the show, eight-time World Series of Poker circuit ring winner Michael Leck, putting the cherry on top with 164 grand. Miguel, and indeed a fiesta it was. Yeah, pretty nice celebration he had, especially when you get check jammed on on this final hand here, and you're holding top pair, top kicker. I thought Tuck was gonna spit his water out there. <laughs> An <laughs> ill-timed sip from the cup. And there's a look at the final results. Look who finished in sixth. Yeah, my ones to watch pick, Connor Drynan. From the get-go, he's had a little bit of a slow start, though, but he will be heading down to Mexico to play more events on GG as he does have that bracelet bet with Daniel Legrano. Three-time circuit ring winner and two-time bracelet winner, perhaps notably back in 2015 when he took down the main, Joe McKeon next up in event number 14. 352K, a nice haul for him. Yeah, and there's some people that have come and gone after winning the main event, but not Joe McKeon. He has definitely been able to stick around and replicate that type of success. Maybe it's the first name Joe, because another main event winner, Joe Cata, also has done very well for himself on the heels of his performance. And there's a look at the final results from event number 14. Third place, Roland Israel Ashvili. I don't know. I, I don't know if I'll ever get that last name right among the notables, and there is a hand. You see McKeon didn't have the chip lead wire to wire by any stretch of the imagination, and he had a seven dominated here head up. Yeah, in this pot, it was limped pre-flop, and on the flop, even though he did hit top pair, Joe checks it over to his opponent, the whole funk, who, of course, with top pair himself, is going to bet 120,000 fan of the poker. Joe McKeon's gonna make that call. Now on the turn, really interesting card here for both players. The six gives McKeon top two, but it gives the whole funk top pair and an open-ended straight draw. Can't really fault him for betting 480K, but now Joe decides to go all in for 2.99 million. It's about 2.5 more to call, 4 million in the pot. You have to think you only have about 12% here six clean outs with the non-spade eight and non-spade three. So I think it's a bit big of a call off to make there, even with that draw. And my guess is the whole funk has definitely been replaying that hand in his head. And last in this little block, we've got Guy Dunlap, the event number 15 winner, throwing a curveball in the screen name streets. Posing as Phil Locke. Yeah, a little misleading there by Dunlap. And you know, he hasn't had a ton of results to date, but of course now he does have a WSOP bracelet under his belt. And there's a look at the final results from event 15, Maria. Second place? Yeah, Shane Daniels definitely sticks out for me as he was runner up in the PLO 8 event. So he is two times a bridesmaids now and maybe he will end up taking home that bracelet. And of course, in the WSOP.com streets is not the only place that we are working toward winners. Maria's bracket has a little update as we work our way from four down to two. Getting really close to crowning my champion of screen names. But first, between Nostradamus and Bagel Bites, I had to go with no. Oh, come I on! Did, I know, but trust me, I've purchased a lot of Bagel Bites and I will be consuming them. And then between Itchy Kawawa and Huck Cheevers, I just had to put Itchy Kawawa up there because, as we had mentioned, Pat Lyons, it's kind of his signature saying his battle cry right and the fact that i remember and i can associate that with pat lyons if you've you know made that deep of an impression yeah. then i feel like you deserve to be in the top two you don't even need to have been at the same table as pat to have heard it because it comes out loud sometimes you're like yeah i feel like at the rio i heard that at some point in time no controversy on that second one but i'm still bagel bites I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Sorry about that. All right, uh, the next three events, a little recap of that. There is Pat Lyons, Mr. Ichikawawa with the 173K Bink, along with Terrell Cheatham. He's a hustler. And Scott Hempel, Bud Light Lime. How about guard beer selection there? Yeah. You fan of the Bud Light Lime? Only when I pair them with Bagel Bites. 
quick. Oh my God, that actually is probably, they should be marketed together, <laughs> honestly. They, they really should. Okay, event number 19. It was Kenny Hewn who took it down. Chop him. 133K richer for the effort. And we got a look here at Tuck's call right on the end. And Hume playing out of New Jersey has had quite a bit of results online in the mid six figures actually and some live results to go with that as well, over 200,000. And he'll be picking up some points for the player of the year race. But before we get to that, let's look at the final results here in sixth, Hunter Frey. Yeah, Hunter Frey is a player that when I first got into the game, he was playing full time. I don't know if he's kind of moved on to other things now, but he still shows up every now and again and makes deep runs. There's a few people like that that just kind of pop their head up. They're like, yeah. let me take a little haul and then back to my regularly scheduled programming. All right, now for the player of the year standings. Obviously, some people collected some points, including Miguel Fiesta, who now is in second behind Rob Kuhn by just a skosh. Yeah, Rob Kuhn, though, quite a few points ahead of everybody else. He's had an incredible theory so far. You're right, that isn't just a skosh. That's over 400 points. Where is my math? I mean, my goodness, You're who is sitting pretty? A little bit. <laughs> From player of the year to player of the week, no math necessary. It's all subjective. And who can argue with Ichi Kawawa? Pat Lyons beaming there as he is given the crown. Nobody else really in the conversation this week, right? Yeah, you just can't beat the guy's enthusiasm generally and for the game. And he's somebody who, you know, has kind of bridge that gap between people who play professionally or people who play recreationally but have had amazing results. And there he is in front of the Rio, super hyped to get his bracelet and trying to go for more of an official acceptance of his bracelet. Well, a man who has been not just player of the week, player of the year, decade, maybe even the century, the most decorated World Series of poker bracelet winner in history. 15-time winner Phil Helmuth joins us now in the studio from actually a stone's throw away inside the Aria and no doubt one of those fancy sky villas. Phil, there you are. Now, I see the windows have the curtains drawn and my guess is you've been asleep until not that long ago. Talk to me about the optimal online poker sleep schedule. Well, you've got the optimal online poker sleep schedule and you have the one that I'm on, which is not optimal. But Listen, I was playing a lot of online poker. Ali, I went from playing poker once every 10 days mm -hmm. to playing every single day, seven, eight hours a day. Now, it wasn't something that I that I entered by choice, but it just, I started my own game, the Helm Youth game. We have 70 players there. I have one with my Silicon Valley guys. We were playing every day for the first month or two. And then I have another game that I'm in that, that's LA people. And so, and then we just started another game. And so it, there's been a ton of online play and I got myself sucked in Ali and I'm not happy with my life as far as, as far as now I've won a fortune. I've won piles of money, I've won houses, but I haven't been particularly happy with the control I've had. And so last Saturday night, I kind of was like, all right, you're making, you know, in the smaller game, you're making 16,500 a week. And then all of a sudden, I just lost my motivation. I was just exhausted. I took three, four, five days off. And then last night, I came back kind of, I think I've won 20,000 the last few days again. But I've been wanting and ready to play. But above all, it's about the World Series of Poker and how do I stay rested for that. And, you know, and I just cashed the last two days in a row. When I came in, I'm talking too much. When I came in <laughs> off the ship with an 11th place finish, ship leader with 18 left, Ali, to take me out. I had to have, I had 3.8 million, 900K, queens versus kings. And then I lost, and I had 700K, which was like seven bigs by then, and I had ace queen suited against ace king. And then the, and then the big one, I had 2.2 million, a guy raised under the gun with 11 left, and I just shoved 2.2 million, he opened for 200. And he studied a long time, called with ace king, I lost a flip for the chip lead, and I'm out 11th. And I just thought, I'm going to go deep every day. Well, uh, well, Phil, you know, you're very dedicated to this grind right now. So for you who you are so accomplished, what is your next big goal? Why are you out here in Vegas? Why is it so important to you to be grinding every day playing these WSOP.com tournaments? I mean, Maria, I was hoping to have a huge business announcement, uh, announcement today that I could reveal to the world, a deal that I put together. And when it happens, it's going to get kind of international headlines, and it's a deal that I put together. So that's going to be fun for me when that hits. But 
And that's going to be worth millions and millions to me. You know, maybe I don't know how much I'll make, three, four, five million. And so that's a deal that I'm just, I can't do anything about. I'm sitting on the sidelines, letting the CEOs move forward. But, and that's all great. And that's, it has a little bit of my attention or a lot of my attention, but it's all about bracelets for me. Bracelets, number one by far for me, you know, and that's what I'm trying to do. And, you know, and I've, I just joined my officially ninth advisory board. I'm helping all these young companies, whether it's sock companies, Lasso Gear, which is an amazing company, uh, you know, and I just joined Prize Picks, where you can legally bet sports, not in Nevada, I like parlays. I uh, joined their board of advisors, and so I'm having so much fun. But what trumps everything is poker. And Maria, I've been too caught in the freaking negativity, not negativity, but too much whining about Oh, I should be winning 50 a week instead of 17 a week. Oh, my God, I can't believe I take these beats. Online poker, you're going to have a lot more beats. And so I've been too far off of the process. And so then it was about four or five days ago where it just shut up, Phil. You have the most blessed life of anybody you know, right? Just shut up and entertain the process. Well, Phil, you said that you know, up till now, bracelets are still so important and paramount to your goals in poker. So why do you think the WSOP brand remains so prestigious and so popular? We've seen so many of the bracelet winners so far show so much excitement and th enthusiasm for taking one down. Maria, every, you know this, Maria. Everybody wants a bracelet. Everybody wants it. And we're judged by that, you know, a, a lot of us. And, you know, and I, people I hear sometimes say, you know, with a kind of a wistfulness, oh my God, I can't believe I finished third that year. I had aces beat by sevens and, you know, and then, but they're back trying all the time and everybody wants bracelets. It's kind of a, a measure of, you know, of poker success. And, you know, and, and to me being here, I, I, I lost track, Maria. I lose track sometimes of how blessed I am. Not usually for too long, but I lost track, was too much in the negativity. I recognize how blessed I am to be here right now today playing, you know, for just to be able to play for bracelets every day is a really cool thing, you know, and, uh, you know, and I can't dwell on, you know, bad beats. I had lists of bad. Forget that. Just play the best you can play and try to be very happy with the results and just focus on the process, because especially now. It's all about the process. There's only one tournament a day, Maria. You know, if you enter at 5.30 and the blinds are a bajillion, two bajillion, you're out by eight, and you're like, Whoa, what's next, you know? And, and you're looking around and, you know, uh, this is, in, in, you know, in the normal World Series, well, there's two other tournaments I could enter, you know? Well, I gotta say, Phil, you have brought us so many memories throughout the years, and your time in poker goes back well before, I think, both Maria and I, into the 80s when you were fighting for your first bracelet and it's nice to see you flirting with humility. In fact, at one point, you weren't even a household name, and the humility came courtesy of a misspelling of your last name. Take a look at that. Who is this Phil kid? Is it two L's? Is it one L? But I know you remember that moment so well. A different time without question. But we're looking forward to more shots like that, hopefully online edition here as the summer rolls on. And thank you so much for joining us, bud. We appreciate it. Great to see you guys. And Listen, the, the many faces of Phil Helmuth, I love, we put something together. You know, we've seen him falling out of his chair at heads up, you know, bemoaning, looking up to the sky, almost in like an operatic fashion. And take a look at what we put together. These, this is what you should just have a magnet on your refrigerator throughout the summer. And you can just point to this is how I'm feeling today. You put a little circle around it. Anyone else in the house knows what's going on. What, what are you feeling today, Maria? To be honest, I, I feel a little bit frustrated. Honestly, my online poker experience hasn't been going that well. So I can really, uh, I can uh, get on board with that frustrated look. <laughs> I'm, I'm just very happy. What do you feel? You see, you, you, can you see this on your screen there? I, I did see this a while back. They're not showing it to me right now. I can't see it. But yeah, I, I, I think I'm at the happiest end of that spectrum right now. Um, things are so amazing in so many ways, uh, you know, but I mean, in order for me to be truly happy, I think I need a bracelet. <laughs> no, stop it. You stop that noise. But it would be nice. It'd be a nice cherry on top of an already very successful Sunday you've scooped up for yourself. And uh, again, we thank Phil for joining us right now. Frustrated.
Yeah. Think positivity. Come on, haven't you learned anything from our friend Phil? <laughs> I mean, I I feel bad for being frustrated. I can definitely um, agree that it's nice to be able to play for a bracelet every day. We are blessed with this opportunity, but dang it, I need more. <laughs> And don't forget, the place to get your fix from Nevada and New Jersey, WSOP.com. And if you're outside those borders internationally, ggpoker.com. All right, as we do every week, it is time to comb the Twitter sphere and find the gems that perhaps you may have missed. And we'll start off with a guy who had a nice submission last week, Dan Zach. I think he's going to crowd our lane, Maria. Yeah, I guess the online series has been going as well for him as it has for me. <laughs> He's looking for a job as a commentator, I guess. But you know what? I feel like there's worse things you can be doing than art. You mean job. you mean like taking your shirt off and and celebrating a bracelet like Pat Lyons did? I only tease Pat. The quarantine 15 is real. I'm toting it below this desk as well, brother. Solidarity. World famous Pat Lyons hashtag though. That might be a little self-aggrandizing. <laughs> Ichikawa. Getting it done. We see you, Pat Lyon. Look at that smile. That's a man who's genuinely happy. He didn't dance, though. I, w I wish he would have danced like Michael Lake. GG Poker getting in on the act. Obviously, we've got the overlap period before it transitions all the way to GG. And they're trying to do some giveaways, get some people invested in uh, their series. And uh, somebody heeded the call. Yeah, uh, this is the image that would sum up what winning a WSOP bracelet means to Michelle over here. I mean, fresh out of the shower with the cap. Is she terrified? Is she, is this like on the turn and she doesn't know what's coming next? Does she have a waterproof laptop? <laughs> You're right. All things I'm wondering. I, can, I confess I've actually played from inside the shower, but you know what? I, I know somebody who's probably played from even more exotic places than that. And who would that be? Come on, you know the answer to that. <laughs> Our very own Norman Chad. What do you got for us this week, Norman? So I thought online poker would be boring. Keep in mind that I once predicted that Cirque du Soleil wouldn't last two weeks. But man, oh man, it's been a circus out there. Mike Mattiso blew up on his live stream after losing with Ace Queen versus Aces. Tough beat. Daniel Negrano melted down on his live stream after repeated connection problems. Hey, kid poker, I always pay the extra $9.95 for upgraded internet in my hotel room. 70-year-old Ronnie McMillan won a bracelet in his first online event ever. He was playing on his Blackberry. Champ Cornet had one ninth of a big blind left in event 11, and he finished second for 79K. What a comeback. Coincidentally, I had one ninth of a big blind left in the second year of my second marriage, but didn't make it to year three. Ryan DePaulo won a bracelet from his car in a Whole Foods parking lot in New Jersey. He won $159,563, or the equivalent of three weeks of groceries from Whole Foods. Nathan Gamble scheduled to commentate on the PLO8 final table live stream, but he couldn't because he made the final table and won his second bracelet. Heck, I'd win a bracelet too if it meant avoiding time in the booth with David Tuckman. And finally, GG Poker kind of crashed when hosting its first WSOP events, Operator Error, which coincidentally was what stopped my first marriage. All right, back to The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Okay, Bachelor, Bachelor, you're just salty because you didn't get a rose, Chad. And speaking of roses, it is time to crown a champion in Maria's screen name bracket challenge, down to just two. Yeah, and I had to award the top spot to Nostradonkis. Oh. I mean, I like the play on Nostradamus with the donk. You know, everybody knows what a donk you is. You don't even poker. sound convinced. I mean, to be fair, it was kind of slim pickings. You guys. Ichi really no one even knows what it means. Just for that alone, you got to give it the top slot. I mean, I feel like you would like the sheer random element of it all. You know what? I just want a battle cry that after I win a pot, I can yell out loud and just. Be that guy, but unfortunately I don't have one yet. We'll have to come up with one. Yeah. All right, we got a big week on tap. Hobux will be in play on WSOP.com. Hopefully they will come back to the nest this week, <laughs> unlike they've been doing thus far. These fledglings keep flying the coop. Five events on tap from the 22nd and on forward. Here they are, 500 for four of them and a little tick down on the 24th to the 400. What's the one you're looking out for? I mean, I can't even believe that we are so far into the WSOP.com schedule that the summer saver is coming up. But that is exactly what I need right now. Yeah, you got to pull your weight on behalf of the commentator brethren, Maria. What is going on? And of course, we're in that blended part of the schedule where there are two summer camps in action. The other one for the global attendees. 
GG Poker, the look ahead, seven events will be going down from the 22nd through the 26th, and I'm guessing I know which one you're circling. Yeah, I mean, if I were out of the country right now, I would for sure get in that Colossus. $3 million guarantee on that event. And it's nice to re-enter without having to wait in the registration line again. Look at you, you just, you're fiending. You gotta get right back in there. No downtime for you, huh, Maria? No. It's called addiction. See someone about it. All right, listen, uh, we are gonna leave you guys with something special, but before we do, let's sign it off. On behalf of Maria Ho, Ali Najad, here's Jack Effel with bracelet presentations. We'll see ya. Welcome to a very special day in World Series of Poker history. We are here to award a bracelet. So what was the moment like when you won? I can't explain it for sure. <laughs> but I think, I think I'm still celebrating. Everybody needs a little fiesta. We don't know how many more times in life you get to do this. I hope that it's many, many, many more. I don't know, Jack. I'm sorry, I'm rambling. I'm so glad to be here. Unbelievable. I cannot believe it. The dream was to win a World Series bracelet. And son of a gun, I never dreamed online I would do it. And I won the bracelet, and I'm so damn happy.